Hey everyone, today we're going to be diving into the WordPress REST API. This is the REST API that's built into almost every WordPress website. And today we're going to focus specifically on the GET request. And this is the most simple uh, building block of understanding the REST API. If you're building web applications or working with WordPress data or looking to push and pull data programmatically in uh, to WordPress, you need to understand the fundamentals of uh, REST APIs because these are sort of the building blocks of a lot of the internet. So I think that this will be useful if you're not used to understanding or working with REST APIs. Um, it's going to be a very much a beginner course. If you're interested in this type of stuff, I'll continue making this into like a mini series. If that sounds interesting, just uh, let me know down in the comments. So here I've got the WordPress developer page pulled up for the REST API. It's got a bunch of documentation, really, really useful. It's pretty easy to understand um, and definitely recommend going through and reading this. But uh, basically what you need to know is that the REST API is on by default in every WordPress site, and you can access it by going typing slash wp-json after the .com of your domain name. Um, and that will show all the different routes that, that are available in the REST API. Um, one of those is like the posts, right? The posts are one of the main components of a WordPress site along with like pages, right? So you can type pages here and that'll get you all the information from your pages, et cetera. So you can change that depending on if you have custom post types or you want to look at WooCommerce or you want to query your users, that kind of stuff. So that's the fundamental way that it looks like. And it's basically just a way of showing the structured data of whatever your front end is. So, and I can, and this is because this is enabled on most every website by default, I can go to any website. So here's like the WP, WP minute, not a site I control or, or, or have X access to, but I can just type in WP dash Jason after, and it should show me all the routes. And so it's going to look kind of crazy, right? It's a bunch of just wall of text. A lot of browsers have this option here to pretty print it. That will put it in a nice uh, list for me so it's easier to read, right? And you can continue appending this. So I can just type in slash WP slash V2 slash posts. And that's going to get me all the information on all the different posts, right? So I can see the most recent post and it's going to show me the, the first 10 recent posts by default. That's the sort of default response that when you hit this URL, uh, it will show you um, all this information. And so now I see all the different data points for my posts or for the WP minute post rather. So I see it in ID. I see like the date it's published. I see the slug. I see the status of it, right? I see all that good information, the, the title, the content. So those are really the ones I want you to keep a lookout for like title and content. So that will let us be able to know that and the ID that lets us show that we're on unique posts. So I can also just take all this data and copy paste it. Um, and, and then go to like a JSON viewer and paste that in. Right. And then I can see those 10 posts is going to show them as objects. Right. So I can open that and it'll show me there's my 2025 new year's resolutions is my most recent. And then after that, um, so my second post will be about top five WordPress articles and I can go back to the actual return data here and I can see there's my 2025 new year. And then let me just search for like top five. Yeah. So there's my next post is the top five, right? So it's showing me all my, the, the top 10 posts that are uh, currently posted on the website. So let's take a look at. Another site I have here that's just a temp site that I have some sample posts in, post one through 20. And I've got a private one and I've got some scheduled posts here, but otherwise these are just normal posts with some sample data in it. I've got different categories. So, but let's, let's take a look at what this looks like in the actual REST API. So we can see obviously the, the WordPress version of it, um, but let's, let's just grab this URL and I can replace this URL here and do the same thing where I can pre-print it. And now I'm seeing, okay, there's post 11. Uh, let's look for post zero one. Nope. That's not in there because we only are getting the first 10. 
no, the, the latest 10. So the, the first post isn't included there, but we can search for, you know, post 12, post 13, right? Post 14, right? So we have all of our posts, uh, or at least the first 10 um, in there. So that's uh, what that looks like just in the JSON viewer. Um, but let's open up something called Postman, which is a free resource. I highly recommend you checking it out. Just make a free account to be able to test this kind of stuff because this is how you can learn uh, for free, basically. So um, let's just grab this endpoint here, the WP JSON for the posts, and I can append that here. And then I can just do a get request. See, it's going to do get to that same endpoint. And we're going to get the same data. There's our ID. Here's our post 11, right? And I can search in here for like post 12, post 14, post 16, right? So we have all of our data in here and all the various endpoints. So that's great. Now, a um, couple things that, I, that we can notice is that we only get the first 10 po posts, right? What if we want what, more than 10 posts? There are so many <laughs> posts available in um you know on, on wordpress sites you can have obviously more than 10 so what you can do is add additional query parameters so the query parameters will be appended here and will filter or change the get request so that it returns even more data so i could come in here and type per page and i could put 20. and then if i do a get request on that it's going to do the same thing, but it's going to show much more. So now I can probably search for post one, uh, post zero one, there it is. Post zero two, zero three, zero four. So it's, it's showing me all that different data. And if I grab all of this and go back to my JSON viewer again, paste that in, and I can see here, I've got many more posts than just the 10. I've got an additional seven posts. And so these are published posts. So if I go back to the WordPress site, I can see there's 17 published posts. And so I'm getting all the posts that are currently published, right? Because it's, again, it starts at zero, goes to 16. So that's 17 posts that it's showing me. So that is working as expected. It is returning um, a value here that I can see and, um, you know, it's showing me everything based on my query. What, what other query parameters can we put in here? We can put in, and again, these, these are all available in the documentation, but um, just bear with me because I know some of them. So I'm just kind of add a couple. Well, we can do order by, and we can order by title, right? And if we order by title and then do another get request there, it's going to return by the um, but the one that comes at the very end of that list, because we're ordering by title and it's ordering descending by default, but I can change that to order ascending. And then I'll probably get the first post, the very first post here. So if I do a get request there, sure enough, it returns the post zero one. Um, and so I can, again, I can change that to like descending and then it'll give me the 17th post because that's the most recent one. And, again, order by descending. So you can change the parameters here to uh, get only the data and in a certain order that you want. Um, you can also do pagination here. So if I did only five posts, but I wanted to do, I can do like the first page of it, right? That'll show me 17. But then if I want to go five, the next five posts, I'll do page two. And this will change to 12, right? Because it's five posts after that because it's getting five per page, right? So this get this lets you just kind of change. The other th nice thing about Postman is you can disable these. So if I just want to go back, okay, what was the what was the main one again? Okay, that's the main post query. And then you can start adding in things as you wish. If I change that, that'll change the order. Change that. That won't change the order, but if this is ascending, it'll start with the first post, right? And you can change the order by, you can order by date. And again, that the first post was probably the most recently published post, but let's go descending. 
And actually the 11th post here, not the 17th post, is the most recent um, order by date, right? So that's just happened to be the order that I did it in. So this lets you pass in basically all the fields you want. Let's, let's show one more thing in here. I can actually specify what fields I want. Let's just say I only want the ID of the post. Don't know why you would want that, but let's um, also just take these off. And we'll send that. And now we're only getting the ID. Right? We're getting the first 10. If I specify, you know, 20 here, we'll get 20. And so now I have more. But, you know, the just the ID is not super useful, but maybe you want the title, maybe you want the author, maybe you want the content. And so I could basically, I'm limiting the amount of data that needs to be sent back and forth over the REST API by specifying, hey, I only want you to send me back the ID, title, author, and content, right? But let's say, you know, we wanted categories, right? So then it adds the categories, right? So that's basically how you use the query parameters to modify your get requests. You can specify, this is kind of akin to like GraphQL, if you're familiar with that language. Um, it lets you specify that you only want certain fields returned. So this same kind of logic applies to pages, to custom posts, to users, to your products and WooCommerce, all that good stuff. So I can also go to, you know, pages. And there we got, we have different pages that we have. Um, and I can also specify, you know, categories. And that'll get me all the that work? Yeah. There's my category information. So there's like one, the category name, the ID of the category, all that cool stuff. So a lot of powerful stuff you can do with get requests. Um, let's see what else we got. One other quick thing we'll do in this video is look at uh, authorization really quick. So if I come back here, I can see, you see how we have a private page and that that was not showing up in any of our rest api calls and to demonstrate that i can actually hover over it and at the very bottom left corner you can see it's post id equals 91. all right so and this one is like 28 so really quick let's come back into here and do posts and then slash um i already forgot what it was 28 28 and that's going to that's going to return just that one post all right it's going to only return post one no other posts are are going to come in because i've specified hey i want you to return that post id so let's try and return um 91 okay when i try and go to that hidden post or private post it says hey sorry you're not allowed to do that and that's because it's it's requiring authorization and so how do we set that up? So there's a couple ways to do it. We're just gonna use basic authentication right now. If I come back into my WordPress site and I go to my users and I just open my demo user here and I will do a demo delete me password name for my application password. And this is separate from your WordPress login password. This is an application password used. Uh, so you don't have to actually expose your password. So. Um, I will go ahead and add that and I will copy that. And you can see now I have that key. It's never been used. So if I go back to Postman and I try to do authorization, I can say, um, you know, by default it's set to no authorization, right? So then I can say, I want to do basic authentication. There's my uh, username and I can just paste this password in and then try and hit the endpoint and it's going to return the data because now I've authenticated with a password. Okay. So if you see this content in the rest API, you are authenticated successfully. So we've successfully done a get request on a private post and been able to return the data on it. Um, the other thing you can do in Postman, which is pretty handy is I can change this password to actually just be a variable and I can say set new variable and I can call this app password or something like that and then you can choose the scope i just want to apply it to this current collection but you can do it vault or global i guess so i'll just set that 
then there I'm not now I'm not having to expose the password every time uh, it's been inserted as a variable, right? So if I um, again we're still authenticated, so I can see my private post. So that's how that works. The other thing you can do now is go by status and I can do like future posts because I have a couple that are scheduled. Uh, let's see, did that work? Oh no, I need to remove the post ID and let's send that request. And so here are my future posts, right? So there's my status equals future. So I've specified, hey, I just want the future posts and I can get these because I've authenticated um, and I'm able to get these posts because if I come back and remove this, uh, let's just delete this and then try and send this. It's gonna say, hey, you're not authenticated anymore. You can't see the future posts in this get request. You need to provide the authentication. Again, if I remove that status and try and hit it, it's gonna work because I don't have that specified status for future, right? But if I hit that again, it's gonna say, hey, you're not authenticated anymore. So that's um, just a brief intro into get requests, into basic authentication uh, using variables, and just like a quick look at what this all means. And hopefully this is useful. Um, again, let me know what you think. If you have questions, be happy to answer them. See you in the next video.